Okay, so we've got top five foods, top five vegan foods. Top foods for vegans, for iron? Man, it doesn't really matter. What matters, you've got blood tests. You always like to show my blood tests, you know. Notice that Dr. Gregor doesn't show his blood tests or his fitness tests. I just give a lot of advice, but what I do find, not hating just saying, but uh, I find that people who follow Dr. Gregor's advice, they eat less, no sugar, well, rice is bad. I find they develop anemia. And uh, from calorie restriction, not enough nutrients. This is my blood test here, some deets. And uh, my hemoglobin is 185, which is really, really high. You know, it's almost, it'd be too high for some people. Um, so maybe it's a little bit dehydrated, so the value, but it's normally, it's normally about 160 to 170, 175. So the deal is, is people just, this is a pretty late video actually, this is 1 a.m. And I've had no stims today, nothing. This is just pure fucking energy. This is what I find, like, being vegan, doing my thing for 18 years, I'm at age 42, I need very, very little sleep for what I used to, used to do. You know, I've had caffeine or stims for months, you know. And so, those things inhibit iron absorption. So probably to, to reduce my hemoglobin, to reduce my iron, I probably should start drinking coffee again. Or having energy drinks and stuff like that. But to be honest, I haven't had an energy uh, coffee since 1999. You know, um, coffee is you know, it's full of the alkaloids in the coffee. If you're gonna have caffeine, just have pure caffeine. Have an energy, have a Red Bull if you want. You have a Red Bull if you want. But uh, again, if you have those things, don't have them if you're tired. Don't have them if you had them the day before. Don't have them if you're a bit dehydrated or if it's hot weather. And don't have them if you're hungry. All right. You only want to have a stimulant like caffeine or anything like that, Ritalin or whatever you're going to do if you're really, really hydrated, carved up, you know, had proper sleep. People are like, what? I do those things I don't have to sleep. I do those things I don't have to eat. I do those things instead of drinking water. Well, my friend, your adrenal glands are going to be cooked. Your iron stores are going to go down. And your hemoglobin is going to go down. And you're going to feel more fatigue and more tiredness. You're going to have a, a dad bod. Like our friend, How Not to Die author. You know, you're going to be cooked. You're going to be cooked. Ooh, that's just trolling around. So that's just the reality right there. So how to boost iron as a vegan. Get enough calories, man. Cut the oil out. The oil inhibits absorption. Chop your oil right back down, especially if you want to lose a bit of weight. Or get rid of the oil, you know. And just eat more calories. More fresh fruit and vegetables. Bananas are great, dates are great, fruit's great, molasses. <laughs> All these things are fantastic, you know. Otherwise, if you're trying to do just whole foods and not get enough calories and then start drinking coffee you're and cacao. You're boring as fuck. Boring as And you're, 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 your food's going to be boring, you're going to be boring. You know, I just want to notice. I notice there's a, I know a, an Adelaide person that, uh, I, mean, oh, I know a lot of people over the years. And uh, once you start cutting the calories down, then you go to coffee, you go to caffeine regularly. Not just like once in, for a time trial of the blue moon, like you start to do it daily, start to go to just hang out at the cafe, drinking coffee, putting cacao on your oatmeal, Gregor style things. And just and then, then your personality, you go to take tanks down, you get more anxiety, more depression, you become more bitchy and snitchy and all flicking around, you know. Um, if you suffer from anxiety, please don't use any caffeine or any stims. They're, 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 the, main, they're the main trigger of anxiety, stimulants. All right? So just, if you have any anxiety or depression, don't use stims. Go to bed earlier, have more carbohydrates, things like that. So we can focus on high iron-containing foods, but we know that doesn't really reverse the, the cause of low iron. And often the low cause of low iron is not enough overall calories. So people go, oh... Molasses is really high in iron, that's good, isn't it, Harley? And I'm like, well, how much molasses is he going to eat? Bananas are really good in iron. Dates and fresh fruit and organic fruit and rock dust growing fruit. Yeah, but how much are you going to eat? Are you on a little starvation plan? You know what I mean? Things like that. So I couldn't have a hemoglobin of 185 if I had low iron in my body. The body couldn't produce so much of a hemoglobin. So I don't, I don't take an iron supplement. You know, I'd get enough calories. I've taken iron supplements before in the last 20 years, for sure. Little experiments here and there, but... 
I definitely wouldn't be taking one right now. You know, this would just be like, it must be dangerous. So that's what I mean, once you start adding in things like stimulants or whatever, then uh, your whole endocrine system starts to, you know, cascade, get bounced around. So be very, very careful. Things like prednisone as well. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a very, very powerful drug. I've taken it a few times this year, maybe three or four times this year. And one of those times was yesterday. I had a bit of an asthma episode at a running race beforehand, so I just took a pred just to be safe. And I paced the, uh, I was there for the, the bit of volunteer. And I was all right, and today I was fine. But the medic, the doctor's like, take it every single day for like weeks. And I'm like, no, I took it once. And I haven't taken it for the last six months. So I took one small tablet, 25 milligram. Once in six months, you know? And if you look on, online how much people use prednisone, man, people abuse that shit. And no, no wonder they get big pred cheeks and have weight issues or have to use thyroid medication to kickstart their thyroid going again because they abuse these things. So some medications have a place, but the less you can use, the better you'll be, for sure. On most of them. Unless you're type 1 diabetic with insulin, then keep doing that. Uh, so that's the thing, is, is the iron... This is very fragmenting thinking. What's got the most, you know, what bike is the lightest? What's the lightest bike you can get? Well, the lightest bike you can get. Do you want durability as well? Does it, do you want it to have a bit of stiffness in the frame? Do you want it to be able to ride around corners and on rails? You can even probably make a frame out of 300 grand since it's probably going to crack as soon as you hit a big bump or you fall on it or whatever. You know, it won't be very stiff at 300 grand. It'll, it'll flex a lot. It'll be very unstable at speed. What's the highest food in iron? Well, that's probably going to be uh, blood, you know, drinking blood of a, an iron-rich animal. But is that going to be the healthiest? So, so the best source isn't always the healthiest source, is it? Yeah, I remember Doug Graham was teaching that back in the day. I was like, oh, that makes sense. The best source isn't the healthiest source. The, the best, the lightest frame isn't the best frame, you know. The healthiest is what we're going to be going for. And that would be a, a nutritional <coughs> plan, a diet, if you want to call it that, that lets us, you know, have enough energy every day where we don't have to rely on stimulants. We can perform at our very, very best naturally. And uh, yeah, it, it keeps us healthy. And it avoids uh, the fatigue that we have in society today. The fatigue is so deep. I've been awake now for with no stims since uh, 6.30 this morning. What time is it now? Um, about 1 a.m. 1 a.m. You know, so I've been awake for 19 hours. Just... Getting stuff done. I keep you stimulated. Keep you stimulated, you know? So it's like, phew, no stims. All day focus. That feels fucking good. And high hemoglobin definitely helps with that. So I would recommend also, the other thing I, with low iron as well was like, what's your hemoglobin? You know? You, you can have low iron and have great hemoglobin. That's fine then. But what's your B12? So the, the important things are, what's your B12 levels? Get those tested. Or just do B12 injections if that's cheaper. And what's your hemoglobin level? You know, they're, they're, that's the two biggest things. Performance, hemoglobin, B12. That's, they're the, the ones. They're the number one. Number two. <laughs> number one and two. So, you know, I can feel I'm a little bit, starting a little bit tired. And uh, I go, well, I could have a Red Bull right now. You know, it's only 1.30. Nice young. It's a public holiday here in Australia. Labor Day. But no, that'd be abuse. Taking the stims if I'm tired. I mean, maybe if you're in a 24-hour race, and you're like, okay, I can see that, but I'm tired now. Starting to wind down. Not, you know, the cortisol, everyone's just, you know, going into recovery mode. I could abuse that, take some stims, stay up, yeah, and the next day you dig yourself into a hole. So uh, so I recommend people just stay away from stims as much as possible. I've had years where I haven't taken any caffeine or red or anything of any sort. Years, <laughs> you know. Like you deep rest. Unfortunately, sadly, most people are never going to have that in their lives, and that makes me feel a bit sad. The people are getting their whipped, their adrenal, whipping their adrenals every day, and no wonder there's so much depression and anxiety and you know, ill health, Ill, Ill thoughts. That's just crazy. And then they get other medications, the SSRI drugs, or the, you know, the Xanax and the alcohol and the weed and the, the lysergic acid diethylamide, all these sorts of stuff. Man, all just starts drinking fucking coffee in primary school or high school, and the anxiety kicks in, and it's just like pull that coffee out of society. We have a lot less problems. You know, pull out the alcohol. 
So we're going to have a lot less problems, man. So, yeah. That video, this video is uh, answering that question. What about iron? What about iron? Get enough plant calories, three, four, five, seven thousand calories. Is that whatever you need? Just if you're hungry, eat plants. All right? Eat more. Want something sweet? Eat fruit. Want more sweet? Put sugar on your fruit. Blend it up. Drink it. Want something salty and savory? Have a big bowl of rice, white rice, quinoa, millet, whatever you prefer. Put some soy sauce, a bit of ketchup on there. Chop up some veg, chuck it in there. Keep them chowing down until you're like, until you're done. Don't eat portion sizes based on what other people say you should eat. Eat until you're like done, all right? Until you're like done. Go to bed early, get it when you're done. You know, when you're pissing, just you stop pissing when your body's like, okay, we've had enough. You can't go, oh, I've pissed for five seconds, I better stop now. You just listen to your body, boom, if you keep eating, man, just keep eating. Simple as that. Get those calories in. And, uh, you know, and ideally have simple meals to increase absorption rates. If you've got like 20 ingredients in a meal, it's a bit hard to digest that. So often the best meals are generally a mono meal of fruit. And one of my favorites is a mono meal of fruit, quality fruit, tasty fruit. Second would be a you know, meal of starches with some sugar or some soy sauce. But same, very, very simple. And that just increases that digestion rate, increases absorption. And so what's the point of having all these nutrients in the food if your digestion is so slow from so many things going in there, so much oil as well, it's just greasing up everything. The, the bili, nutrients aren't getting through the bili because it's all coated in oil. It's just like, it's just slopping around, you're just crapping it out. So the oil, man, like the less oil you can consume, the better. If you are going to be consuming any oil, I'm actually doing a lot of, you know, not a lot, but just making sort of doing some sort of form of exercise where you're moving your lymph system. So you've got that stagnation going on there, the blocked lymph and not enough uh, activity. Cycling is what I like to do, walking, cycling, jogging. But kickboxing, dancing, sex, the good stuff. Just splash around the pool. Hope that video is a service. Got any questions about iron, just up down below. We'll do some more follow-up ones. Thanks for the question. But yeah, focus on your B12 levels, injections, forget everything else, pills and all that shit. Fuck that off, man. That's just like, I know a guy the other day I was coaching, he's doing pills and he's mad anemic. You know, low hemoglobin, he's doing pills, B12 pills. I'm like, bro, you're in the Dream Rider program now, injections only. If you want the best results, then follow what I'm saying. Injections only when it comes to B12. Uh, pills are just, it's dangerous, man. You don't know what the fuck you're getting. You didn't know what you're getting. Might work, might not. That's dangerous shit. Get the pharmaceutical grade injections from the hospital pharmacy. Don't fuck around with B12, man. That shit's serious. Doesn't matter what you eat. People are, oh, eat meat. I'll be fine, man. <sighs> Watch a documentary. Could it be B12? Some serious shit going on out there with B12. Man, that ain't no hippie woo woo talk. That's the real deal. Legit. If your B12's low, brain ain't working properly, your thyroid, your metabolism, nothing's really going on. You're getting all anxious and psychotic. I see people going to psychosis, low B12. <coughs> Reverse with B12 injections. Yeah, so you get your B12 uh, injections. Just do those. You can test as well if you want. But again, that can cost more for some people in some countries. B12 injections are definitely cheaper most of the time than getting an actual test done. Um, and the test, if you're under 500, you know, a lot of experts, B12 experts, hematologists recommend over 550 is a minimum cutoff. In Australia, the cutoff's like 170, 180. Horrendous. That's why we have such a high Alzheimer's rate, some people are saying. But uh, yeah, B12, hemoglobin, get those things. Hemoglobin, I'd save for men and women over 150 in a hydrated state. And B12, over 550. And boom, you're good to go. Good to go.